Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with another review of Greenleaf. This is season five, episode four, entitled The Fourth Day. And we always start off our Greenleaf uh, reviews with an old nasty piece of him. So we here we go. Today, we're going to do Jesus Loves Me, something really quick and don't require me to use the diaphragm too much. So let's start off the services with... Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Amen, amen. All right, now, let's get into the review. We open up. It's the release day for AJ from the hospital. And that doctor, we now have a name for her, Dr. Son said that she recommended an inpatient f facility where uh, he could get the help that he needs. Gigi feels he would be better suited at home. Well, when AJ comes into the room, the doctor discussed his options, and AJ decided he wanted to go home with his father, Noah. Now, you know they must have hurt some to miss Gigi, but that was his decision. Now, at the house, Bishop is upset that Jacob didn't come to him right away uh, with this information about the will. He said he's not a killer and he's offended. They not feeling him going to see Rochelle and Basie's half sister. He, Lady May is at the table as well. They feel that he had uh, he had somehow alerted her that something is amiss by going over there without talking to them, and uh, he ain't feeling it. Aaron is supposedly coming over later to discuss options. They need to know if the old will supersedes the new one. May says Bishop need to be in that meeting. She also mad that Carissa brought this whole matter up after uh, living in their, in that wing upstairs that they pay for. She says she loved Jacob, but right now he has pissed off in so many words and get out of her face. She asked Bishop if he wanted to go to Calvary the next day for the final services there before they bulldoze it down. He said, at first he act like he didn't remember. And I think he honestly, something going on with Bishop. Something going on with the good Bishop this season, honey. I don't know what it is. Let me turn this off because I'm not going to be interrupted. Mm. But yeah, he said he, 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 don't, he didn't forget. He claiming like he just simply didn't want to go because he put that out of his mind. That's what he say, okay? He say he put it out of his mind, but no, he ain't going to the final services to be held at Calvary. Absolutely not, okay? Um, She said, well, they're going to have a little something at the house, maybe a prayer service or something, but they will commemorate that day. Now, over at Calvary, Judy is being especially rude to Charity about the final service before the uh, reconstruction begins, just disregarding any of her ideas about how said, such said services would run. Phil agreed that Judy, uh, you know, and <clears throat> he agreed with Judy, basically. He went against the grain and he allowed Judy to tell him what he wanted to do what she wanted to do at the church. Basically, Charity had no say. Now, as they're doing this, uh, Gigi is listening in. Afterwards, she mentioned something about Phil's mom, who Charity says is deceased. But then Gigi said something about Darius has dug up some info that may help stop the demolition of the church, right? So I'm like, okay. And ask Charity straight up, after the way they just treated you and I heard it, are you in or are you out? I would definitely be in because they were so rude to her, calling her, a uh, Judy called her a necessary evil that they deal with. 
I'd help, I'd help my family in any way I could possibly can to save our church, especially if she want to get in good in the good graces of everybody again. Apparently, Phil's mom has something to do with this Bob and this even, uh, even Dale landing place, and they need charity to help find Phil's dad. She talking about she finally got the AP position after years of waiting on her dad to make her one. Helping them would read it uh, would help read Judy out that church. That's what uh, basically Gigi was telling her. Girl, you get on board with us, we can get rid of her. She told him basically, well, you ain't going to find his dad because the name that his father is known under, he changed it some years ago. She's not certain why. All she know is he's an ex-Black Panther now living in New Orleans and that he doesn't approve of what Phil is doing. So that's all she could give. Now, May goes to see Carissa and told her that she need to get out of her house. She know everything and she must go. You doing all of this for a couple of measly hundred extra dollars. That's when Carissa admitted that she don't want a divorce. She admits that she cheated, but then she named all of the women that Jacob cheated on her with and she forgave. She said if May can convince Jacob to change his mind about the uh, divorce, then she'll stop. But if he wants to play hardball, game on. I said, oh. That's how we come in, Miss Charity. That's how you feel, girl. Really? Okay, cool. Anyway, Aaron now is at the house, and he's saying that uh, basically uh, the new will would supersede the old will, but the problem is public opinion won't be good. And they don't need to add no extra controversy, especially at a time where they're trying to plan and open up a new church. May comes to get Jacob to talk to him and says that Bishop may need to talk to uh, Tara uh, if they're going to get a there there about this situation because she absolutely cannot stomach losing her home and her church. He convinced that he may actually be able to talk to Tara, so he leaves to go do so. Gigi called Phil dad and quickly got dismissed after he said that she was a pastor, asked about his ex-wife that has been deceased for 20 years and mentioned Phil. He said she struck out and hung the phone up in her face. He don't want to talk. I said, oh. Um, upstairs, May is talking to Jacob. She basically telling him that if, when somebody do something to you, you have to forgive them. It, um, uh, let he without sin cast the first stone. His argument is, you don't know what she did. You would never do that. He said, you don't, she said, you don't know what I would do. She said, but that woman has forgiven you time and time again, Jason, Jacob. And what you need to do is fix this situation. You need to go in there and forgive that woman. Then back over at the church, we see Connie Sykes. Now, y'all know we, we don't see it for Connie. Connie gets on everybody's nerves, including mine. Anyway, Charity come to her because she wanted to see if she would be on board. See, Charity wants to do a PowerPoint presentation at the last service about the history of the church. Now, Judy already said that uh, they, didn't, they didn't need to do that because uh, Uncle Creepy Mac had been up in there molesting people for years, and they just need to get rid of it. Okay. Well, it appears that Connie Syke has agreed with her and she tells Charity, not only did Judy and Phil say no, I say no. Bishop go to see Tara and she's surprised to see a green leaf two days in a row coming to see her. He said, but he needed to set the record straight. Back at the house, AJ comes home with Noah to get his things and uh, as he's going up the stairwell, she starts telling Noah about him needing to see his doctor, his HIV meds, and he overheard that and said that's why he don't want to stay there now. He wants her to just leave it alone. When she went upstairs, when he went upstairs, Gigi stressed to Noah that AJ still needs to take his medicine. He's asymptomatic. He needs to be on his meds or he will get sick. He said he knows and he will see to it. As May is now coming down the stairs and offers tea, he accepted it. I think at this point, she probably going to have to step aside. I know it ain't easy, but sometimes you have to step aside. 
Judy came and fired Charity for speaking to Connie behind her back. Charity said, you can't fire me. She said, oh, yes, I can. Because, see, I'll be first lady soon. And the only person that has more power than me is God and left Charity sitting there in her office. Charity goes to see Phil saying that Judy fired him and he said he was aware. She wants to know if he will allow it. And he said, well, she don't need to be going behind their back each and every time a decision is made that she don't like. But he said, Judy is not going to press it. She said, fuck it. <laughs> basically, not church language. She didn't say that literally, but that's basically what she said. She said, oh, and my lawyers will be, you'll be hearing from my lawyers, but you ain't got to fire me, I quit. She says she can't even respect him at this point. What a waste of man. Gigi was walking along the property and thought about her son when Bishop comes up bearing groceries. And she said that uh, AJ ain't going to be staying with them. He's packing up right now to go to Noah's. Bishop told her, don't beat yourself up. Noah is there and advised her to leave some room for God to handle things. He reminded her. We never thought you would come back, but you did. Nobody saw that coming. He told her, give herself a break for feeling guilty for what she didn't do for AJ and work on right now. And right now, let him bond with his father. It's okay. Sometimes you got to relinquish some hope. Jacob went to talk to Carissa. He about to go on and try. He went in there to try to, pop, to tell her that he forgive her and that he want their marriage. That man couldn't even manage to, to say that out of his mouth. So she even realized he couldn't say it and gave him the words to say about forgiving her. And even after being prompted what to say, he couldn't say it. She realized and said that she'll lay off the wheel because it's clear they're done. Now, I feel two ways about this because y'all know I am not no Carissa fan. But A, he was never in love with Carissa. That's what it seemed like to me. Now, I don't know the backstory on their relationship because when we started this program, he was already married to her with two children. But the man clearly wasn't in love with her. And it is a double standard. But the way he explains it later make you kind of understand why he stepped out so many times. If you're just living in misery and you're going along to get along, any way that you can find an outlet for just a moment, you're going to take it, and that's what he did. Doesn't condone the fact he cheated on his wife, definitely not. But through that, I could see. Zora and Sophia is up in AJ room trying to convince him to stay, and then Gigi came in and asked, could she speak to him? He expected a lecture, but she simply asked if he had everything he needed and said, uh, remember to see your doctor. He said, okay. He got that covered. She said, you can always come back here, you know. He said, he received it well. And by her, to her surprise, he ended up actually kissing her on her forehead. Now, I know that must hurt, but again, she got to let go. Let him go connect with his father, and eventually, he may come back. But let him go. That's the hardest thing as parents to do. Sometimes we got to just step aside. She better remember what... uh. Bishop told her, leave some room for God. To, you done did everything you can do in the time that you were allotted. Yes, you gave him up for adoption years ago, but you have reconnected with your son. But he's not, he's a hurt person. Plus, he got them, them letters on him. And he found his father as well. Allow him time to digest being with his father again. Things will work out. Now, Bishop trying to convince May after talking to Tara that she can be trusted, but may not bind it. She says she got a bad feeling. That's when Jacob come in. They setting up the table for dinner. And he tells her that he couldn't do it. He couldn't say that to Carissa. He said he didn't want to go back into that thing that was them again. She says, um, well, you might not have to because apparently your father have talked to Tara James and things seem to be okay. You'll have to speak with him about that later. She said, but let me tell you something. You don't want to have no disconnect with your son. If you and her got to go y'all separate ways, then so be it. But stay connected to your children. Charity comes in. I quit. Thank God I'm free. 
May was, of course, happy about that. Now they all sitting down to the dinner table about to give prayer, and Tara calls. She wants to talk to the bishop again about that house and child. Everybody had that look. I like how May checked uh, Carissa at that table when she started talking about Tara. What is she calling for? She told her, at this point, you don't have a right to say nothing. Zip it. So now that's where we end off. We don't know what Tara going to do. She walked, Bishop walked away feeling optimistic about the situation. But I feel like Tara is going to kick up some noise about that house, honey. Because remember, at the end of last episode, she called somebody and left a voicemail that a Greenleaf had came to see her. Now, I don't know if that's Basie or if that's Rochelle. Because they say Basie did and she don't know where to, uh, Rochelle is. But clearly, she has still some connection with her half siblings that's it that's all you guys i hope you enjoyed this episode review for green leaf this week we will be back next week for episode five and in closing as always you do not have to be great to get started but you must get started in order to be great and also that the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please on your way out, remember to like the video. If you have something you would like to lay on me down in the comments, a.k.a. panic section, put it down there. I'll get back. If you have not subscribed to this channel or my backup channel, Lady Nika Live, please subscribe to both of my channels. The link to the second channel is always in the description box below the title of the video. Subscribe to both of those channels and personalize your settings so that each and every time I drop a pre-recorded video or go live from either channel, you will be notified and you can come over and join in the conversation. Thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support of myself and the platform. Have a great remainder to your Tuesday. I plan on trying to do the same, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.